Welcome to Travel with Sean. I'm Sean and today we're in Roskilde, Denmark, standing in front of the Roskilde Cathedral. The significance of this cathedral is a couple things. One, King Harold Bluetooth made Roskilde his capital city around 980 and built the first cathedral here, which was probably the second cathedral in all of Denmark at the time. It was a wooden structure, and when he died in 985, he was buried under it. Later on, his daughter, excuse me, his granddaughter, Estrid, sister of King Canute the Great, had a stone cathedral built here, replacing the wooden one. And that was in compensation for the loss of her husband, which she blamed on her brother, King Canute the Great. At any rate, and that was consecrated in 1280, and in the late 1200s, another church, excuse me, in the late 1100s, another church was built here. And this current church, built around 1200, was built of brick. And the significance of that makes it an UNESCO World Heritage Site. What's the significance? Significance is that brick was a new building material in the early 1200s. And the building of this cathedral using brick led to brick being used more widely and popularly throughout Europe. This also is the burial place of probably 40 kings and queens, which constitutes nearly all of the kings and queens of Denmark, with a major exception of two, which would be the father and elder brother of Queen Margaret I. Now, I did say that the second church built here in the early 1000s was built by Estrid, King Harold Bluetooth's daughter. I must correct myself. Actually, she was his granddaughter. Her father was Sven Forkbeard, who was the first Viking to conquer England and take the throne. He, reigned, he ruled in England for only a few years and then passed it on to Estrid's brother, King Canute the Great. Now, King Canute the Great had her husband, Olaf, killed. I don't really know the history of why this happened, but anyhow, he admitted to it and for penance, as for absolution, um, to compensate her for her loss, he agreed to pay for the, a new church to be built over here to replace their grandfather's church and it was consecrated in 1080. This particular church we see here was approximately 200 years later in the mid 1200s. And as I said a little bit ago, brick was a new building material at, at the time. So this cathedral really set a trend in Europe and a lot of other locations wanted to use brick for their churches and their cathedrals. Here is the, bat, the outside of the chancel of the cathedral. And you'll notice there's a lot of parts where the cathedral sticks out. It doesn't resemble the shape, the normal shape, what you'd expect of a church or a cathedral with all these different parts sticking out, various different stages, various different levels. The reason for this is that nearly all of the kings and queens of Denmark, since Harold Bluetooth created Roskilde this town as his capital city. Since then, nearly all of the kings and queens of Denmark have been buried here, including 1985, the current queen, Margaret II, or Margaretha II, built a chapel on the side for her father to be buried in, King Frederick IX. So all these little areas that stick out are chapels that were built later on to accommodate crypts for the kings and queens. 
The main exception to the kings and queens being buried here are the father and elder brother of Queen Margareta I. They're buried elsewhere. But other than that, pretty much all of the kings and queens are buried here. When the current queen dies, you can bet she'll probably be buried here. That is one of the major significance of this church, this cathedral, in addition to being UNESCO World Heritage Site because of the use of brick, um, when brick was just starting to become a building material in the 1200s. We're now inside the cathedral, and one of the first things you see is this ornate pulpit from the period of the Reformation in the 1500s. And real close to it, you see the pipes of the pipe organ. It's known as one of the finest historical organs in all of Denmark. The oldest parts are from 1425. Most of what we see is from 1654. But there's been a lot of improvements in the interior, most recently in the 1990s. Going back to the pulpit, you can see the intricate carvings along the side. And then here's a view of the entire church with the king's pew box to the left, the pulpit and organ to the right, the altar ahead of us, and behind it, the royal crypt in place of the high altar. Here is another view of the royal pew box that was put in by Christian IV around 1600. And there's actually two chambers back there, two rooms. Looking down on the church from on top of the pulpit. Now here you can see the two frescoes together. King Harold Bluetooth on the left, Estrid, his daughter, sister of King Canute on the right. The royal crypt in place of the high altar. There are several side chapels in the cathedral which act as burial places for various kings and queens. This cathedral is home, is the final resting place to over 40 kings and queens of Denmark. Here we have King Frederick III and Sophia Mali, along with King Christian IV with Anna Catherine and King Christian V with Charlotte Amali. This is a statue 
of King Christian V. This is the grave, the tomb of Queen Margaret I. She, her body has been lying here since 1413. She was originally buried elsewhere, but then moved here in 1413. The tomb was supposedly paid for by Eric of Pomerania in 1423. The sarcophagus, that is. Usually in a cathedral, you'd have what's known as the high altar, which would be right here. But near the end of the 1600s, King Christian V decided to convert this into a royal burial place. So he and King Frederick IV, along with their queens, are buried here in these sarcophagi. This fancy door is known as the King's Door. It's only open for royal visits, for funerals, and confirmations. This one was actually installed in the early 2000s and was to replace one built in the 1800s, which replaced an even older one. The one from the 1800s was made of wood. Prior to that, it was stone. Thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, please give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe down below so you can be alerted to future episodes of Travel with Sean. Thank you.